In this problem, we're asked to find the angular natural frequency for this system, where we have a rope running around two pulleys that are held up by springs, and there's a mass at the end of the rope. We're told the pulleys are frictionless and have negligible mass, and we're given values for the spring constant and the mass of the block at the end. We always assume that ropes don't stretch. So if we have frictionless pulleys and the rope doesn't stretch, then the rope should have the same tension everywhere. So we need to figure out the equation of motion of this system. We're going to start with a free body diagram of the mass. We have a mass that'll have some tension. The tension will be related in some way to the deformation of the springs. And then we have mg, the weight. We're going to assume that we're going to perturb it in the x direction as shown. Now this is the equilibrium point, but because we have springs, there will have been some point where the springs were unstretched before the mass was applied. We'll call that a distance delta. And we know that in every system that is not a pendulum, the mass or the weight of the system will exactly equal the equivalent spring constant times delta. So we can essentially eliminate that from our equation. If we write our sum of forces in x for this system, we're going to write minus t because we've defined x downward, and we'll also say that x dot and x double dot are downward. We need to assign them all in the same direction in order to get the correct result equals mx double dot or ma. And then this is assuming that t equals k equivalent times x. So the tension in the rope is due to the pull of the springs from equilibrium. So we've not put in mg and we've not put in k equivalent delta. We can do that, but they're going to just cancel out. So we get an equation of motion of the system of mx double dot plus k equivalent times x equals zero. We put that into our standard form, x double dot plus k equivalent over m times x equals zero. And we know this is omega n squared. We just have to figure out what k equivalent is. And we're going to do that by doing free body diagrams of both pulleys. So if we look at pulley 1, when the mass goes on, the pulley is going to move upwards. So it will have some motion x1 due to the application of the mass. The rope passing through it has the same tension throughout on, at every point, and so we can have two tension upwards, and the pulley's massless, so we don't have uh, a weight. Lastly, we're going to put in the spring force, Fs1. Now, I always assign it in the direction of motion of positive x, and then give it a negative value. That's just to help keep track of everything. So we're going to write sum of forces in x for the pulley. We get 2t plus, plus fs1 equals 0 because mass equals 0. fs1 is going to be equal to minus k1x1 and so we end up with 2t equals k1x1. Now, if the pulley moves up by x1, then the movement of the rope, 
that runs through the pulley is going to be 2x1. So we have to pass two times the rope to move the center of the pulley uh, a, dis a certain distance. We'll do the free body diagram of pulley 2. And similarly, we've got the pulley, we've got two tensions. When the mass is applied, the pulley is going to move downwards by a distance x2. And we've got force of the spring 2. Sum of forces in x will have 2t plus force of the spring 2 equals 0 because mass equals 0 of the pulley. Fs2 equals minus K2x2, and we end up with 2 times tension equals K2x2. The movement of the rope through the pulley to allow it to move x2 is going to be 2x2. So when we come back up here and look at the distance the mass has traveled, well, it's attached to an inextensible rope. So if we've gotten 2x1 of slack from the motion of pulley 1 and 2x2 of slack from the motion of pulley 2, then the distance x is going to be 2x1 plus 2x2. That gives us the motion of the mass given the motion of the pulleys. What we really need to find is what this k equivalent is as a function of k1 and k2. And so this relationship between the distances is going to give us that relationship between the spring constants given that we have the same tension throughout. We've already said x is t over k equivalent up here. And that equals 2 times, we've got an expression relating t and k1. So that's going to be 2 times 2t two over k1. So that's going to be 2t over k2. The t's all cancel here. It's the same tension everywhere. And we end up, if we rearrange, we get k equivalent equals 1 fourth k1 k2 over k1 plus k2. And so we can stick that in to our expression for omega n squared. So we can see from our characteristic equation up here that omega n is going to be the square root of k equivalent over m which is the square root of 1 over 4m k1 k2 over k1 plus k2. And if we stick our numbers in there, we find that omega n equals 2.31 radians per second. Thanks for watching this video. Find more videos and material at Mechanics Map.